Welcome back everybody to our class introduction to quantum optics. Today we want to discuss the dynamical equations that govern the dynamics of our Bloch vector that we had described in the previous classes and actually apply it and see how we can get an intuitive understanding more of the dynamics of this two level atom. So let's get started. So I remind you that we had already written down the dynamical equations of the two level atom system in terms of the density matrix e equations the differential equations for the density matrix. And because the Bloch vector components u, v, and w are nothing but the density matrix components, we can recast the same differential equations into differential equations for u, v, and w that describe the dynamics of the Bloch vector. This is what is shown here. So these are the same differential equations that we had for the density matrix, now just recast into our Bloch vector formalism. Right? So this gives us exactly the same dynamics that we had for our two-level atom. I'm not going to derive it here, how this is linked to the density matrix. You can check for yourself, but we rather want to have a look now what kind of the dynamics is that we can see in this Bloch vector formalism. So actually there's a very compact notation of writing these same equations of motion that we have here now in a differential equation for u, v, and w as the cross product of this minus omega zero zero delta vector with u, v, and w and our damping term. And that's like that, actually these optical Bloch equations are very easy to remember. So much easier than before, right? So this is a much better form of remembering the optical Bloch equations uh, than remembering these equations for the density matrix. Like this, it's much simpler in this vector, form, uh, vector notation that I've introduced here. So let's have a look at the dynamics of what happens now in this case. Let's first take a look at the dynamics without damping. So there's no spontaneous emission, for example, in the system. We just have coherent dynamics without damping. So then we have neglected the damping term and we see that's just a differential equation here describing the rotation actually of the Bloch vector u, v, and w around this rotation axis with an angular frequency given by the magnitude of this vector. You might remember in classical mechanics, the velocity of a point particle with radius r rotating around an axis omega was just given by v equal omega cross r. And you see actually this is exactly the same equation. Now differential equation, this would be just dr dt. This is exactly the same differential equation, but now for the Bloch vector. So we just have the rotation of the Bloch vector around this axis minus omega zero, zero delta, and the magnitude of the rotation frequency, the angular frequency of this rotation, is just given by the length of this vector, and that's just square root of omega zero squared plus delta squared. Now that's something we know already. This term omega, this here, that's just the generalized Rabi frequency that we had already encountered before that describes these faster Rabi oscillations that don't make it quite up from the ground state to the excited state. Now without damping, we know that all the dynamics of the system, if we're initially in a pure state, has to lie on the surface of this Bloch sphere. So the length of the Bloch vector is conserved, is always one, and uh, throughout the entire dynamics, coherent dynamics of the system. So let's take a look at a few examples to familiarize ourselves with this dynamics. So let's first take a look at this case where we have a resonant dynamics, uh, where the detuning is zero. If the detuning is zero, then this term here vanishes, and we just have rotation now around the u-axis with a frequency given by the resonant Rabi frequency of our Bloch vector. So let's take a look if that really happens. So here I'm plotting the initial state. This is my Bloch sphere. All the atoms are initially in the ground state. So my Bloch vector is pointing in the negative w direction. It's minus one in w. So the initial Bloch vector is zero, zero, minus one. And then we turn on the light field. And then the dynamics will be governed by this differential equation. And that's just a rotation around the u-axis with an angular frequency given by omega zero. So let's take a look if this really happens. So let's look at this animation and uh, showing us indeed what we had been predicting. We see that we rotate around the u-axis and the Bloch vector goes from the south pole right through the north pole, back to the south pole again, back to the north pole, back to the south pole. 
meaning complete population exchange between the ground state, excited state, ground state, excited state. Let's take a look at another example where we're now slightly detuned. So if we're slightly detuned, we're tilting the Bloch vector relative to the u-axis and now we expect kind of detuned Rabi oscillations to occur. So let's have a look here. We're starting again with the atoms in the ground state and you can indeed see that the axis around which we're rotating is tilted and you can indeed see that the atoms don't make it anymore up to fully into the excited state. They go back to the ground state but not anymore back to the excited state. Not anymore through the North Pole but they always come back to the South Pole. And that's exactly what we had for the case of detuned Rabi oscillations. If you remember the plots that we had for the population in the excited state, that would be less than one. It would oscillate faster between the ground state and the excited state at the generalized Rabi frequency, but always come back to the ground state, but not make it quite up to the excited state. Let's add damping now, another case uh, that we would like to discuss. Now, if we have damping, we know that we have initially some oscillations and then the system should settle in in some steady state uh, that we had calculated, these steady state solutions. So let's see this dynamics uh, now. I've just integrated, numerically, numerically integrated this differential equations for the case where we have resonant uh, and situation, delta equals zero, but a little bit of damping, gamma equaling one third of our resonant Rabi frequency. So let's take a look here. So we see the Bloch vector starts rotating around the u-axis but now gets more and more damped and settles in into the steady state at now inside the Bloch sphere because we're having damping. You see how the steady state solution is approached and that's the one we had been making use of in, for example, calculating some of the scattering properties of light interacting with this two-level atom. Okay, next example, detuning and damping. So now the axis around which we rotate is tilted and in addition we have damping in the system. So let's take a look what happens here. And we can indeed see now how the Bloch vector rotates around this tilted axis. We have damping again in the system and we see how we settle in into this new steady state for our system uh, with the detuning and damping. Okay, so now you see this is a very nice way of understanding the dynamics of our Bloch vector. It's very easy to remember and without damping at least it's very clear what's happening. It's always this rotation around the axis minus omega zero zero delta with a frequency given by the magnitude of this vector, the generalized Rabi frequency square root of omega zero squared plus delta squared. Let's look at a few special cases uh, again. So let's say we start in the ground state. So let's say we start in the ground state of the system. Initially we're here and then we kind of have resonant Rabi oscillations. We have no detuning so we know we're rotating around the axis minus omega zero zero delta. So now we want to, we will see, we will have rotated after some time, the block vector will have come into this new position here without damping after some time t and will have rotated around some angle phi here. Now what is this rotation angle? Well, that's simply given by the integral of our resonant Rabi frequency over time. If we would have rectangular pulses, that would just be the amplitude of the rectangular pulse given by the resonant Rabi frequency times the time of the pulse would set this kind of rotation angle phi that we have here in the system, okay, around the u-axis. Now if you have a more generalized pulse than a rectangular pulse, so this would be the rectangular pulse, then you can make use of this formula describing the pulse area of the system of the light atom interaction and it will determine, in the case of resonant Rabi oscillations, it will determine the rotation angle of your system. So let's imagine, for example, we concatenate pulses. What happens in that case? Again, we start in the ground state. Here, atoms initially in the ground state. We make a first pi over two pulse, which means we rotate by 90 degrees around the u-axis. So the block vector will now be here. Okay, so we will have rotated 90 degrees around the u-axis here. Now if we have another pi over two pulse here, again we're resonant, then we're gonna rotate another 90 degrees. So now the second 
after the second pi over 2 pulse, our block vector is going to be here, right? So this is the first block vector. This is the second block vector after the second pi over 2 pulse. And now if you add another pi over 2 pulse, well, you're just going to make another rotation by 90 degrees around the u-axis and your block vector will now lie in the plus v direction. So it starts out with 0, 0, minus 1, becomes 0, minus 1, 0. Up here it's 0, 0, 1, and over here it's 0, 1, 0. Now finally, let me discuss a special case which always con uh, confuses people a little bit, that something's happening in the detuned case even when there's no light on. So imagine we brought our system into a superposition of the ground in excited state. So we've rotated our block vector from the 0, 0, minus 1 position into the 0, minus 1, 0 position here. We're now in the equatorial plane of the block sphere, which remember describes coherent superpositions of our uh, two states, one and two, okay? Now, if you have detuning, if delta is not equal to zero, what's going to happen? Think a moment for yourself, what's going to happen in that case to this block vector? Did you get it right? Well, let's just look at the equations of motion. In the case when the light field is off, Omega zero is zero, but we still have a detuning. So now we're going to have a rotation of the block vector around the Z axis, the W axis, at a frequency given by the detuning. So the angle that we recover here now, that would be just minus delta T, or if we are looking at the rotation around the plus W axis, that would be just plus delta T. This rotation angle we pick up here when we rotate around um, plus omega, plus around the w axis here, the z axis. So the rotation angle we pick up depends on the detuning and the time we have the light field off. So why is that? How can it be that the block vector shows some dynamics even if the light field is off? Think a moment for yourself why that could be. Well, remember that in the block vector formalism, we're in the rotating frame of light. We're measuring all the phases that we acquire in our atomic system relative to the oscillation of the light field. So if the atomic oscillation is slightly detuned relative to the light field oscillation, then our oscillating dipole of the atom, which oscillates at a frequency omega 2, 1 times t, is going to run slightly out of phase with the oscillation of the electromagnetic field which oscillates at the frequency of light. And this is exactly this relative phase relative to the oscillation of the light field is what we're plotting as an angle in the equatorial plane of the Bloch sphere. Right? We're in the rotating frame of light. Don't forget that. That's the important thing. We've separated off this fast rotation at the frequency of light. So we're now just measuring frequency differences or phase differences that are required between the light field and the oscillating dipole. So if the light field's off, again, the dipole is oscillating in the superposition state at the frequency of the atom. The light field is oscillating at the frequency of light. And if these two don't match, we're going to acquire a phase shift delta t over an exposure time t where the light field is off. And this angle we plot now as a new equatorial angle here in this block sphere. So that's important. So there's even dynamics even when the light field's off, and that's because we're in the rotating frame of light. All right, that's all what I wanted to tell you today on the dynamics of the optical block vector. And you see that's much nicer than looking at these density matrix differential equations, making use of these geometric kind of features that we have in the Bloch vector, thinking about the rotation now on this Bloch sphere as just a rotation around this generalized kind of rotation uh, vector minus omega zero, zero delta. So the next class, we're going to make use of all of this and see how we can build a very, very nice interferometer with these Bloch vectors and pulse sequences. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.